Amen. The title of our lesson today, which is on page 40 for church school, is the resurrection key, uh, the resurrection key to faith. Our lesson scripture will be coming from Mark 16. For the scripture will be Mark 16, 1 through 8. Our key verse, let's say it together. Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. Here is, here is not he. He is not here. <laughs> Mark 16, verse 6. Amen. Let us do our response reading. Amen. Starting in the NRSV version. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, that he is going ahead to you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Aww. So, so they, they went out and, and fled, fled from, from the tomb, tomb for terror and, and amazement had seized them. them. And, and they, they said nothing to anyone, for they, they were afraid. afraid. Well, now I'll now turn it over to our Amen. Our church school leader, our Brother Curtis. Yeah. Esteemed doctor. All right, thank you, Pastor. We come today and to say good morning to everyone and happy Resurrection Day. Happy It's a wonderful, wonderful occasion, a wonderful thing to be here once again in the house of the Lord on a Resurrection Day. We're at Camp Hope AME Church at 114 Camp Hope Church Road in Macon, Georgia. We're saying good morning to everyone in the classroom and good morning to all who are online that have come to join us. Um, have a wonderful lesson here today about faith, about the resurrection, and about what transitioned here. Um, you know, if you realize, and if you're a student of the Bible, you realize that there are resurrection stories in all the Gospels. But um, this lesson particularly chose Mark, um, Mark Gospel, and, and people say that uh, Mark's Gospel is probably the oldest Gospel. Uh, some people contend that, and some people um, debate that. But in any event, um, John Mark uh, supposedly is the author of it, and stated that he was um, writing his version of it and did a wonderful job in expressing and showing Jesus in a different light. So we come here and realize that something is going on. We realize that all of a sudden, last Sunday we talked about Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday was when Jesus did what? What did he do? Rode into Jerusalem. Rode into Jerusalem. How? Cold, cold of the dark. Okay, what was laid in the road? Uh, Palm leaves. What were the people saying? Hosanna. Hosanna. They were praising him to the heights. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, now, do y'all realize that you can get turned on that fast in less than seven days? Mm -hmm. Have y'all ever been turned on? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, right? So it does. It is amazing that this happened. But... This is why I tell people the Bible shows us and tells us how things can happen. It tells us and shows us even in today's time, at a time like this, even now, you can still get turned on. So everything that we go through in our lives, it has happened before. 
So we have to realize that this is a wonderful thing. The title of our lesson is The Resurrection, and it says, Key to Faith. The Resurrection, Key to Faith. And uh, we come to Mark chapter 16. In Mark, Mark chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 8. And when you look at this, you see, and you have to realize that Jesus has come into Jerusalem. He's come to his own. He's done some wonderful, marvelous things. He's done some powerful things over the time frame, frame of his ministry. However, you know, as we talked about it last week, that people do get jealous. When people get jealous, sometimes they retaliate. When they retaliate, they sometimes even want to kill you because of the fact they want you out of the way. So here we have a situation where Jesus has come. He's gone from hall to hall. He's gone through all the interrogation from being praised on last Sunday to Thursday being held from hall to hall and, and Try in, in unjust courts, and, and, and all of a sudden he goes before Herod, he goes before Pilate, he goes before the chief priest, he goes before everybody, and they really can find no fault in So all of a sudden, there is a judgment, and those same folks that, that yelled and praised him said to crucify him. They wanted to get rid of him, to crucify him. So all of a sudden, we have a situation where Jesus is on Good Friday was crucified. And all of a sudden, we have a situation that comes in and there is a series of events that happen. And from Friday to Saturday uh, to Sunday morning, he laid in the tomb. And the situation is this. Friday is was well, Good Friday, and according to Jewish tradition, Saturday is called the Sabbath, or the seventh day. But if you look at our calendar, it's the seventh day. So, and it starts at sundown on Friday. So for that reason, when Jesus died on the cross, they were not able to go ahead and do what they call the funeral rites, or some people call it the, the or anointing, or some people call it the, the uh, uh, celebration of, of and and, and uh, covering his body with uh, ointments and oils, and so uh, days time some people call it embalming, but it's, it wasn't embalming in, in, in the sight that we know. But in any event, so they had to wait until after the Sabbath, Sabbath, which was that Saturday. So they waited from Friday evening to Sunday morning, and this is where our lesson starts today. Early Sunday morning, they got up and they went out and they said they had a mission. Early Sunday morning, they had to go out and go forth. And the Bible says that when the Sabbath, which is Saturday, was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint his body. So all of a sudden, you have to realize that the Sabbath is gone, it's Sabbath. It's early Sunday morning, and they go to this place to anoint Jesus to an embalm. And they, it says that they bought spices. So realize, what do y'all think was happening from Good Friday, when Jesus died on the cross, when Joseph came and asked for his body, Joseph of Arrhythmia came and asked for his body. What do y'all think the people were thinking? What do you think about the disciples were thinking? Y'all think they were grieving? Y'all think they were wondering? Y'all think they were, they were actually wondering what, whether he was going to do what he said? He said he was going to come back. What do y'all think? What, would he, what, would he say? what do you think these women were thinking? They want to bury his body. They want to bury his body. But let's just say it like this. Do we get stopped sometimes by with the task that we have in front of us? Okay. Okay. Does the task sometimes seem insurmountable? Sometimes it seems large and big, and we don't want to do it. Now, okay. Now these people had faith. These these women had faith. They they had a task in front of them. They didn't know how they were going to do it, but they took forward 
and they moved forward. They knew they had, they wanted to anoint Jesus. They knew they had to get spices together. They knew they had to prepare. Then they start talking among themselves. So here we go in this lesson, and it goes and talks about it, how these three ladies, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, of James Brother, and, and Salome, they bought these spices and came about and did go to anoint him. And it says this routinely and very nicely. In the second verse it says, And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. So all of a sudden, they have prepared their minds. They've got a mission to go on. They have a way to go. They got to go and anoint Jesus. They're going to go regardless. And all of a sudden, very early in the morning, they start to go. And that's why we have what they call sunrise service. And so all of a sudden, early in the morning, they went there. They had been saying, number three, verse, third verse, they had been saying to one another, this is a million dollar question. Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Now, why would that stop y'all if you are going to go to the tomb? I ain't going to, you know, hey, we're going to roll away that big old rock. I can't do it. Bro, let him might be able to do it. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe we can get somebody to come and help us. But, one of the things that you have to realize that these people had faith and they were on a mission. So all of a sudden they were going down to the sepulchre, to the grave, right? Uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, the tomb. Um, and when they got there, they find a surprise. When they got there, they looked up and all of a sudden they saw that the stone and this was a very, very large stone. They saw that this large stone had been already rolled back. All right? Now, what do y'all think they're thinking now? What do you think? What do you think? That, what do you think? The, 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 the ladies have come in. They have come in. And they got their spices. They're getting ready to go in and on Jesus. They were worried about the stone being rolled back. But all of a sudden, when they come to the grave site, the tomb, the, the sepulchre, all of a sudden, the stone is already open, or the tomb is already open. What do you think that people are thinking? What do you think the ladies are thinking? Lord, we need help. <laughs> well, the rock is going to roll back. What's this in the rock? Somebody came and got them. Somebody came and got them. Or somebody has done away with them. Whether it was the Jewish people, whether it was the Roman soldiers, or whether it was was, was the disciples or whether it was some, some, something has happened. So all of a sudden they have a vision of something happened. So they're in awe. They're in shock. But, but now, some people would you go in or would you run away? Would y'all go in? Anybody go in? Anybody go in? He want to go past the and go see what's going on. I might pee and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, here all of a sudden, they come in and the stone is rolled away. So they got concern, they got fear, they got all these emotions going on. And it's, the, 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 the statement came about, and in Mark is written, it says, as they entered the tomb, they entered into the grave, they saw a young man dressed in white. The young man sit, dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alone. Now, if you saw an angel sitting on the right side or anywhere, would you be alone? Why? Why would we be alone? Because I don't know why he's there. out of the norm. We don't know why he's there. You know, because of the fact that, that it's different. Anything that's different, and, and <laughs> anything that's different causes concern. Anything that's different, that's different causes us to be alone, as, the, as the, the Bible says here, that they were alone because of the fact that all of a sudden they were looking for a body. They thought Jesus was going to be there. 
And all of a sudden, they see this man, in, in a, a young man, dressed in white robe. Now, some, some versions uh, uh, call him angel. Some, there's different, different titles, but in any event, he was there. He was sitting there in a long white uh, uh, garment. And he come in, and how do you know when you are addressed by an angel? What do angels say in the Bible? What do angels always say? What did Jesus say when he appeared after he had died? What did he say? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Peace be unto you. Uh, peace be unto you. He gives you some type of comfort to let you know that it's all right. I'm, 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 I'm here, but I'm, you know it's all right. You know, be not afraid. And so he comes in with these different things. And so this angel knew and saw that the, the women were alone because of the fact that they were looking for Jesus, but they did not find him. He said to them, in the sixth verse, it says, but he said to them, do not be alone. Or uh, in, in the King James Version, it says, do not be afraid. But you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. Or where, where the, the place they laid him. So we come in and here and we find some facts. Some of the facts that goes along with this. The fact is that the angel addressed them and he told them to not be alone. He told them who they were looking for. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He told them that he has been raised, that he has risen. And then he gave them one more point, and that point was, he said, look, this is the place where they laid him. So all of those facts came together, and so what you're finding is that the, 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 the situation is coming in where the people, or, or the ladies, are realizing that this must be true because of the fact that Jesus was crucified. He said he was going to rise. And so there's still a, a, no, a knowledge and knowing that the tomb is empty and they showed him the point where he had laid. So all of a sudden we come in and it rolls on. And the angel, as I call it, a young man, gave directions and a commandment. He gave directions to the ladies as to what to do. All of a sudden, he comes in and he says, the transitional word that I love, but, on the seventh verse, but go tell his disciples and Peter. Now, why, let's stop right there. Why did he say go tell his disciples and Peter? Why did he say that? He <laughs> <laughs> was like the outspoken leader in the um, inner, okay, inner, inner, like Peter James. Every day they were with, they were with him. So that was, was okay. Kind of what else? What did Peter do with the cock broke? Denied. Denied. Denied Christ, 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 Christ. Uh, three times. Oh, yeah. He denied. Peter was full of guilt. He said, What did he tell him? I would never do what? I would never, never do that. I would never deny you. I would never leave you. And Jesus told him that before the cock controls three times, you will he'll deny me three times. And so that happened. Jesus was full of remorse. Now, you look at the fact that you, your master, your leader, uh, has died and been crucified. You denied him. You, you've you been, as the pastor said, you've been the number one man. You've been the uh, head disciple. You've been uh, going forth, and now you have denied him. So all of a sudden, he's filled with remorse. He feels he don't know that whether the 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 the, the leader uh, or his lord has forgiven him or not. And now he's going through a situation where he's set back. And so some people say that he had set aside from the from the uh, disciples and sort of set back and decided to go into fishing again. However, 
God shows you here how we ought to forgive, how we ought to come in, and how we ought to give people another opportunity at life. He comes in and he restored Peter. He comes in and he said, but go tell you, the disciples and make sure you tell Peter. Basically, I'm putting some words in there, but make sure you tell Peter that Jesus is going ahead of it, them to, to you, to, to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told him. So all of a sudden, all the things are being planned out. All of the things are being told. She's given, uh, the, 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 uh, the women have been given directions uh, by this angel. Uh, he said what he has said in his commandments and, and what he's told the, the disciples. All of a sudden, we come into the latter part here. And so, they first, they went out and fled out of, from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, why were they afraid? Why do you think people, why do you think these ladies were afraid? They had never seen anything like this. They had never seen anything like this. Okay? What else? In the grave? In the grave? What else? Was that was was do you think their faith was shaken? They were shaking. They were shaking when they were first wrapped. However, do you think that they had a bewilderment or wondering mindset or were they amazed or did they have something going on where they come in and factual and knowing that Jesus said these things and the words have been said and all of a sudden, the Bible says that they said nothing to anyone. Now, when you see something shocking or something different, do you talk about it? <laughs> okay, some people do, some people don't. Some people don't. Some people keep it to themselves. That, that, that couldn't be impossible. You know? <laughs> so, they, 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 the Bible says that they didn't even, even talk among themselves because of the fact that they were they were trying to figure out exactly what was happening. However, they followed the directions of what the angel had told them to do in order to get back and, and um, tell the disciples and Peter what to do. Now, let's ask this question. Why weren't, why weren't Peter and the disciples there? They were scared they were going to get crucified. Very well stated. They were fearful. They were, they were afraid. So they, they were sort of standing off and standing off. And, and if you read some versions of uh, the, 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 the crucifixion and the resurrection, you'll see that, that there were soldiers and, and guarding the tomb. So they, they were afraid to even go there, whereas the soldiers would probably allow the women to go there. They would come in and say, well, you were one of the ones that went with this Jesus fellow. So you have to understand that what is transitioning here is that these women had a strong faith. One of the things that they did was they were on a mission. They kept going. They, they did not allow things to block them. The things that could have blocked them was the fact that they, they, they couldn't go home the day that he died. They couldn't. The second thing was that they had a, a big stone in front of, front of the uh, gravesite or tomb or sepulchre. And the third thing is when you look at the fact that they had seen something and Jesus was not there, it all comes around to make them realize that Jesus was real. But their faith wasn't shaken to the point that they stopped doing what they wanted to do. So they went forth because God is good. And you have to realize that this resurrection comes in and it shows us how good God is. It shows us the eternal power of the Lord. It shows us that uh, this resurrection was real and what Jesus said did come to pass because he is real and, and God is good and we love him and we thank God for this day because we have a living friend that lives and that he has come in and pastor did an excellent, he's done several, several sermons on the blood and it is a wonderful thing to know that Jesus died for us to give us an opportunity to come back in relationship with the Lord. 
So realize that Jesus has risen, and this is a day of resurrection, and we thank God for this day of resurrection. So we're going to ask the pastor to come and review us uh, for these last 10 minutes. Amen. Amen. Jesus has risen. We're Christians. We believe that Jesus is risen. We believe that Jesus is, is operating for us, right? Yes. We were accepted as our Lord and Savior. So what else is this lesson trying to say to us? I know we hear it every resurrection day and we're celebrating Jesus' resurrection. But how do we apply this story to where we are today? Hmm. We are Jesus' disciples now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we not? Yes. He said, go out and make disciples. Anybody can't make disciples. Mm. So we have to what? Already be disciples. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. But we find ourselves a little weary going out there. Yeah. Come on. In the streets to do things with all this stuff that's going on around us, right? Mm -hmm. People robbing folk. Yeah, we're going to lose our job. Look like every religion around here got the right to do something but the Christians, doesn't it? Bad, bad. But God says, go forth and do. And go forth and teach. Go forth and be an example. If you can't talk about it, act like it. How are you going to tell us from other people how we treat each other? How we act around each other? How we react to certain things that happen in our lives? Mm -hmm. These women were going to do because that's what they were supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to go out because that's what we're supposed to do and go out, right? We're supposed to conduct ourselves because that's how we're. We're supposed to conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. God gives us a vision, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He gives us a mission, gives us a purpose. And the leadership of the church is supposed to take that purpose and make it plain. For people can understand it. Yeah. People can feel a part of it. Show them where they fit in it. And what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to act in those things. Hmm. The angel gave the children, the, the, the young ladies, a, a task. Go. Go tell. Go tell the disciples and Peter. And Peter. And Peter. That Jesus has risen hmm. from the dead. Mm -hmm. But also he told you that he was going to meet you in Galilee. Uh -huh. You know what he said? So he then told them what to tell them, but he says, now we're going to continue the mission. God has given us a mission here. God has given us a purpose here. We've seen God move. Did he not? We've seen God work through us to do the things that we're supposed to be doing. Did we not? Yes, sir. So we have to keep moving, keep doing, keep striving. People die. Amen. 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 People leave the church. Amen. Amen. But our duty is to go. 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 Go out and make disciples. Huh? I will be with you what? Always. Y'all see the connection in the two about the instructions of what they're supposed to do? And some of us weary about it. Oh, good. You know? Hey, the young folk ain't going to listen to me. Oh, yeah. These older folk, they tired. They done gave up. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing it. You with me? Amen. But if you really step back and look at your life, God has used you. And if God can use you back then, he can use you now. So what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. Them women got up early in the morning. There was a stone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bigger than them covering the entrance. Did that stop them from moving? No. We let the littlest things, or the way we see it, the biggest thing, stop us. Uh, yeah. Is it because we don't have faith in God that God can use us to what God said he can use us for? We got to examine that, folks. Yes, sir. Got to trust in God. Got to be excited about God and go do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is be obedient. God will do what needs to be done. You just do your part. And I promise you, God will show up. God will show up. You don't have to worry about the results of what you do. All you need to do is go do. Yes. Y'all see the correlation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus resurrected. Jesus has gone to heaven 
waiting for his return to come back and say, you followed my orders, well done. You did what I said, well done. Amen. Come and be a part of my heavenly kingdom because you did what I told you to do, well done. Yes. What side of that place you want to be on? So think about it. Thank you, Lord. Thank as we grow, as we learn, as we do those things that we do, these stories are not just about what happened, but what is happening now. Uh -huh. And how we're supposed to react now. 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 How we're supposed to do now. now. Thank you, Lord. Jesus gave them what? instructions through the angel of what to do and Jesus has given us instructions of what to do so let us go out and do let us go out there and be can we do that can we do that I can't hear you can we do that can we do that yes. amen God bless you thank you pastor